everyone, and welcome to Nick's Read Stuff! I thought what better way to start my new booktube channel than by doing the new to booktube tag made by Trina at Between Chapters. So, here we go. Now everyone gets to see how awkward I am. I have the questions right over here, so you may occasionally see me weirdly looking to this direction. Um, I'm sorry if that's odd. First question. Why, where are you joining us from? Um, I currently live in Louisiana. Fun fact though, I have been here less than a year and spent the entire rest of my life in Texas. But um, yeah, so I am from, or in Louisiana. How old are you? Um, I am 28. I am just now getting used to saying that because I actually turned 28 recently, earlier this month, so still tempted to say 27 but that's no longer correct. Um, yeah, so I'm 28. Uh, why did you join BookTube? Um, I joined it for a variety of reasons. Um, first of all, I really like watching uh, BookTube videos and they always seem really fun and a cool way to share your love of books and talk about books. And it seemed like a really nice, cool community. And um, I just thought it would be a fun project. Also, I'm the type of person that I stick with tasks and things, even things I enjoy, with structure, and I thought that booktube would be a fun way where I can kind of keep myself in a sort of accountability system, like committing to doing, you know, a TBR, so a plan for what I'm going to read one month, and then kind of like wrap up and talk about what I have read that month. So I thought it'd kind of be a cool way to do that and still also share my love of books with other people. Um, as far as any other reasons, um, I just thought it would be, I mostly did it for me. I thought it would be something fun. Or right, number four, what is the meaning behind your channel name if it is something other than your own name? I'm sorry, my cat is, is sitting in a box. I don't know why he's doing that. Um, so what is the meaning behind my channel name? Um, I go by Nix on a lot of social media stuff. Um, my name is actually Nikki, but I do have friends that shorten it even further to Nix. Some people even call me Nick and stuff like that. But um, my, a lot of my usernames online end up having Nix. Um, it also kind of doubles. I'm really much a night person, a night owl, and Nix is the goddess of night. So kind of a double meaning there. But um, the rest of it is that I read stuff. I read a lot of different things. I don't just tend to read one genre. Um, I think there's a question later that asks what I read. So yeah, actually, that is a great lead in to question number five. What types of books do you read and want to talk about? So going back to I read stuff. Um, I read mostly sci-fi and fantasy, though I do like to toss in a uh, horror, um, historical, both fiction and nonfiction. I actually read uh, quite a bit of nonfiction. I do like nonfiction a lot. Um, and also erotica, mostly kind of dark, fucked up stuff. And um, BDSM heavy erotica as far as that stuff's go going to go. And actually for this channel, something that I am going to do as far as my reviews and that aspect is I've decided to do a quarterly dirty books review. So um, every three months, I instead of including all of my, uh, I guess, best term is dirty books um in my regular wrap-up i'll kind of briefly mention them and then i will make a probably age restricted video just so i don't have to like worry as much about what i say necessarily um i'll i'll make a video that i just go in depth into my reviews and rants and raves and stuff about um all the smut that i've read the past three months so um yeah mostly sci-fi fantasy some horror i guess you call some thriller i've been recently wanting to get into mystery more but i haven't really as much nonfiction. um i don't read a lot i do not read a lot of contemporary fiction and i'm real picky about ya um first let me preface that by saying if you read ya and you love it i do not judge you at all i know there are some terrible people out there who give people especially adults who read ya like a hard time that's dumb um it's just a personal preference for me 
Uh, I do read some YA. I'm just really picky because I do not like love triangles. I don't like stupid teenage angst. I don't like dumb teenagers being dumb teenagers. And with a lot of YA having, you know, younger, especially teenage protagonists, that stuff is going to happen. Um, I just, a lot of the YA tropes just like get on my nerves. I know that when I read The Jewel earlier this year, which was recommended to me by so many young Goodreads, um, I did it as part of actually a recommendations challenge. Um, I actually really liked like the plot and the setting and I was like, oh, a YA book that I'm actually gonna like. But the main characters, like stupid dumb decisions they did, made me want to throw the book across the room at several points. And I was just like, this is why I don't read YA. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm picky. I, I don't like totally just like, I don't read any YA. Like I'm not like that. Uh, it's just I'm really picky. Like I don't, I don't like people doing just like stupid dumb stuff. Um, <laughs> which teenage, like, Sometimes you'll see that in YA or like all of the lovey angst and teenage angst and love. I just don't like love triangles either and those happen and I'm sure there are going to be people who are like, oh my gosh, you have no idea why there's tons of YA books that don't have that kind of stuff. And if you are one of those people, please send me all of the recommendations. I'd be totally happy to read them. Um, I'd be totally fine and happy with reading YA books with a really cool setting and the kind of genre-ish that I like. Uh, I just, there are certain YA tropes, I guess I should say, that I don't like uh, personally for me reading them. And if you like them, that's totally cool. I'm glad that you enjoy me out of that. Like I said, I would never, um, you know, badmouth. I don't mean it to badmouth anybody's reading preferences. If that's what you really like, then go for it. Alright, let me get my questions back up because this fell asleep. Alright, uh, that part was a little bit longer than I meant it to be, but on to question six. Um, who are your favorite authors? Um, I, I think, um, I know Michael Crichton is one of my favorite authors. I read a lot of his books in high school, like that was one of my go-tos in high school. Um, that and Christine Feehan, um, the dark series by her. I read a lot of that and a lot of sci-fi by Michael Crichton in high school. It was like my go-tos. So I really like his books. I, I like how technical he is in them and stuff. And I'm just, that was what I credit to, his books are what I credit with getting me into sci-fi when I was younger. Um, that was kind of my, his books were kind of my first dive into it. And I feel like they were like my stepping stone into the genre when I was, you know, in high school um, when I was younger. Uh, I also really like R.A. Salvatore. Um, I, I love his Legend of Dritz books. I haven't read the whole series. In fact, I've read very little of it, but what I have, I've, I've reread the first book in the Legend of Dritz series two or three times, and um, I know that probably doesn't sound like a lot to people, but I never reread books. Like, and what I mean by that, like, if I reread a book, I really, really like it. I think I have enough fingers to count the books that I have ever reread in my life. I think I actually have enough fingers on one hand. Um, I really, even if I, like, really like a book, I rarely reread books, but, um, yeah. I've reread that one. I've reread The Hobbit. I've reread The Secret Garden. Um, I think there's probably at least one or two more books that I've reread, but as you can tell, I'm having a hard time thinking of it. I really, oh, Harry Potter. I read, reread some of the Harry Potter books. Um, but I really don't reread books. I don't know why. I just, I don't really feel compelled to, even if I really like it. And I, I will keep books for like a long time thinking I might reread them, but um, so if I say that I like reread something, that means I really, really liked it. Um, I, I also, so let's see, I said, um, Michael Crichton, Ari Salvatore, and Neil Gaiman is fantastic. Um, I love his writing. I also just love him as a person. He's really cool. I'm really, really excited for the Good Omens adaptation. Um, I read the book that he wrote with Terry Pratchett. Um, one of my old roommates in college recommended it to me, and I loved it. Um, 
And so when I heard that they were doing like a TV series kind of adaptation, I fangirled the heck out. I was really, really excited. So yeah, um, I like Neil Gaiman a lot. So yeah, that is my kind of some of my some of my favorite authors. I would have to say. Um, what is the last book you read? Um, the last book I read was um, called Marine Biology. It was a um, male male romance, um, kind of like a really short story novella like length. Um, it's actually a prequel to another book. Um, I did like a MM romance um, recommendations swap challenge and um, that's the book that I got and um, it I don't remember what pen name she wrote it under but it's uh, Gail Carriger, Carriger I don't know exactly how to say her last name I apologize um, the same author that wrote the um, Parasol Protectorate and Finishing School and all that. Um, she wrote it, but she wrote it under a pen name. I think it was G. L. Character. Um, but it, like, it's not like a secret or anything. But yeah, so um, I thought it was really cute. It was really short. Um, the the characters were really snarky, and I, I like snarky. So um, I will probably read the um, next one. That is the book that this one is a prequel to. So that'll be cool. I'm glad I got introduced to the series. Okay, let's see. What are you currently reading? Um, I am currently reading a few books and I am, uh, I'm reading, um, Finishing the Wicked Boy by, um, Kate Summerscale. Um, as you can see, I'm not nearly as far in this as I would like to be, but I'm probably going to read it a little bit more later tonight. Um, nonfiction book um, about uh, two brothers that kill their mom in Victorian England and it's just like about the trial and kind of like everything that's going on in where they live um, in that era around them and just kind of what happened and the psychology of it um it's really crazy my one complaint so far is there's a lot of extra information about stuff that has nothing to do with the trial or the two boys or the family or anything to do with the murder. Um, and I do like setup and context, but I feel like it's too much. So we'll see if that continues. Um, I'll probably do like an actual review sometime in January of the books I'm finishing in December. Um, I'm also finishing uh, Collapsing Empire, which I am liking a lot. Uh, I'm finishing this book called Sex in the Sea, Our Intimate Connection with Sex-Changing Fish, Romantic Lobsters, Kinky Squid, and Other Salty Erotica of the Deep. Um, like I said, I like snarky, and when it's combined with nonfiction, even better. So, um, this is a nonfiction book. Um, it is not a bunch of weird sea creature porn. Um, it's by Mara J. Hart. Um, I found out about this book on a podcast, and, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's really funny. She's really, she's really good about giving all of the cool scientific information, but also kind of making it funny. She's got a good sense of humor. Um, I got this in like a book exchange as a gift. Um, it had been on my wish list since I listened to that podcast. So I was really excited to get it. Um, and I just, I just have my, I've been working a lot and that combined with depression when I'm not working means I haven't gotten as far as I want to in this book. I am also reading, um, two, two other books that are ebook. I'm the um, other two books that I'm reading and hope to finish by the end of December are Infestation and The Mask of Sanity. Like I said, I um, plan to, I will probably plan to, I guess I should say. I'm going to talk more in depth about them when I finish it sometime in January. Um, not exactly sure. Or maybe like right before New Year's. The next question was, um, what do you like to use as bookmarks? Uh, I use bookmarks. Um, I will also use like postcards and stuff, especially if they're really cute, rather than like just putting them in a drawer. Um, I like to use them as bookmarks. So that's, that's kind of how I do. 
I have a lot of bookmarks from Book Depository because I discovered them, um, I guess this year. And I, so yeah, I like to just use bookmarks for my books um, or postcards. Um, I don't really ever use anything else. I have way more bookmarks than I really need, so I don't really have a need to use anything else. Um, so yeah. Show us your current TBR pile. Um, I kind of did that earlier. It is these and then two ebooks. I guess TBR would be more stuff I hadn't started. Um, my first video in January will be me talking about the books that I plan to read in January. Um, I'll probably put that up in the first week. So yeah, I'll do another like big TBR kind of a thing um, about what I plan to read in January. And uh, so look forward to that. But as of right now, it's these three and then Infestation and Mask of Sanity that I have on my Kindle. Um, that's kind of what I'm trying to it's more finish up by the end of the year most of those I have already started I think the only one I haven't started is actually I haven't started infestation yet um apologies if there was a weird random noise just now my cat decided to freak the heck out um so I don't know what what he was doing all right so the next question is which, this is a multiple part question. Uh, which do you prefer, hardcover or paperback, ebooks or physical, owning or borrowing books? Okay, um, I guess I will tackle this one section at a time. Um, hardcover versus paper, it really depends on the cover. I am a sucker for really pretty covers. Hardcovers tend to be a lot prettier, so I like them. But at the same time, practicality wise, I feel like it's, for me, it's easier to. Be like, I'm more scared I'm gonna mess up a hardcover like paperbacks I don't know just seem more durable to me and I'm I'm less afraid that I'm gonna screw up the book or, or mess up the book in some way um I feel like a little bit more like intimidated I guess in that respect with my hardbacks but I think the hardbacks are prettier <laughs> um they're nicer so I do like that um it really in the end if I'm buying a book for myself especially if I'm buying it online it's not just like at a used bookstore because I do go to used bookstores a lot um to buy my books I like to do that uh, excuse me so if I have like a choice between different editions I usually pick the one with the cover I like the most honestly so I just kind of yeah I picked I picked the cover I like the most I know that's probably a really silly way to pick books but like I said if I have the choice I just pick the cover I like the most um ebooks versus physical I really don't I don't know I don't know that I really have a preference I used to be way more like physical books and then I got a kindle um and uh, my parents actually got it for me for my birthday one year and um, they got me like an Amazon gift card so that I could get a couple ebooks. And I found that I actually really like it. It's really nice. Um, and there are a lot of books actually that are ebook only. Um, so that gives me a way to read those. And they do tend to be a little cheaper. So if it's something that I'm going to buy, um, it's nice if I can get it in ebook and it's a little less expensive and and space um I will I may insert a clip if I'm feeling brave enough of my bookshelf it is overflowing I was literally measuring one of the walls in my bedroom the other day to see if I could fit a second bookshelf in between my bedside table and the corner like of the wall because my bookshelf is so full it's just like a little thin bookshelf I'll probably insert like a random clip so I'm sorry in advance for the uh, the crappy editing that's probably gonna take place when I do that all right so I said I would include a little um clip of what my bookshelf looks like right now um yeah I apologize for the bad lighting but you can see it's I I have no more room and I know I've I know I have you know those and stuff but 
But, um, of just like how full this bookcase is. I bought, I, I didn't buy, actually, I got a book from a book exchange that I'm doing because I'm doing a couple Secret Santas this year, um, mostly through Goodreads for like books. Um, and, uh, I got one of my gifts in and I went to go put it on my shelf and I was just sad because I was just like, I have nowhere to put this. Um, cause my bookshelf isn't really that big. So I, but I have quite a few books. So ebooks are definitely kind of more advantageous in that respect in that I, they, they're no matter how many I have, they all fit on the Kindle. Like, I, and it's just that one object. And so it doesn't, you know, take up a ton of room. Um, it is nice to hold the books, but yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that. Um, owning or borrowing books is kind of similar. Like, I, I don't know that I have a preference. If it's a book that I really, really like or I'm really, really excited about, or, like, if it's a newer release and I want to support the author, because I do read a lot of older books. That's another thing about the general, like, variety of things I read. I don't really keep up with new releases that great. I have been in the past year or so trying to commit to reading a couple books that are new releases and just keeping up with books that are coming out that particular year. But I tend to read a lot of stuff that um, has been out a while. I don't, I don't really... I'm not great at keeping up, I should say, with all the new releases. So, um, when it's a newer release, I guess I'm, I tend to be more likely to go ahead and buy it. Um, but I do also go to used bookstores a lot. And so if I happen to see something at a used bookstore that is on my to-read list, um, I might pick it up. But I am a huge fan of my local library. I love libraries. I love just going there and just kind of like wandering the shelves and looking and seeing and I've actually added stuff to my to read list because I've gone and I've been like that sounds interesting and then you know, I'll put my finger in the thing so I don't lose my place and I'll look at it and then I'm like oh that sounds cool so if I'm not if I'm like too busy reading other stuff or you know I don't want to take like 20 books home I'll put it back exactly where I found it um and yeah like I, um what book series got you into reading? Uh, this question, I'm probably going to assume that a lot of people have the same answer that I have. So you probably know what I'm going to say. Um, Harry Potter. Um, Harry Potter series was a really big part of my childhood. I loved the books. I would like sneak flashlights into my bedroom when I was a kid so that like after my parents put me to bed I would like you know make my little like sheet fort under the you know I like put my knees up make my little sheet fort and like read sneakily under the sheets because so like my parents wouldn't know that I was staying up late and I'd stay up super late and then I'd be like all cranky the next day because I stayed up like half the night finishing like a couple more chapters um so those were a big part. Um, I also, the Pendragon series, when I was, especially when I was in middle school, I read a lot of those. But if I had to say which one was more of a big deal for me, I'd probably say Harry Potter. Um, how did you discover BookTube? Um, I discovered BookTube, I guess, by accident. I really honestly don't remember how I discovered BookTube. Um, I kind of just... I think I was probably searching for some kind of review or something on a book on YouTube and then found somebody's channel and then just kind of like went down the rabbit hole and eventually subscribed to a few. Um, so, and just kind of really enjoyed watching them and watching reviews for books, especially books that I was going to read or had read. And also like I, I was like finding out about new books. There's so many books in the world that that's a dumb statement but um yeah so I yeah I uh I just kind of I guess stumbled upon it and kind of just started finding other channels that I liked and going from channel to channel and yeah just wandering the YouTubes uh, let's see what else we got in here um, what challenges do you think you'll face with your own channel? That's a good question. Um, probably 
consistency, like sticking with it, accountability. Um, I do think I'll enjoy it and I'll want to do it. Um, I can be bad sometimes though about like getting overwhelmed with work and also just like letting my depression and anxiety kind of get the best of me and prevent me from doing things that I really want to do. So that'll probably be my biggest challenge is just like digging with it and being like, especially, I mean, obviously if I'm not, I find I'm not enjoying it, I'll stop. Um, and I will, I will make a video like saying like, oh, I'm not enjoying this anymore. I'm going to stop. But, um, if I am enjoying it, um, I'm just gonna, that's gonna be my biggest challenge is just making time for it and being like, I enjoy this activity. I need to make time for it and I not, I need to like do it and not just like not do it. Um, so yeah, uh, last question is where else can we find you? Link up social media, literally in, in like parentheses. Um, so, uh, my social media things, I guess I'll start with, um, Goodreads. I'm on Goodreads. Um, I guess the easiest way to find me on Goodreads is just goodreads.com slash, um, Nick's Reads Stuff, like the name of my channel all together. Um, my name on there is Nikki and then Nick's in parentheses, but I don't know if that would be easier or harder to find me. Um, I will link, um... I will link these this stuff like in the description box below, but um, yeah, it's just Nick's read stuff. Um, but the name will show up as Nikki with with Nick's in parentheses. Um, you, I also have a Twitter. Um, it's Phoenix Amagoy. Um, like I said, I'll link all that down below, um, so you don't have to guess how to spell that. Um, as f I guess I'll also mention like how much bookish things you can expect to see in case that's like all you're interested in and you don't want to just like check out random social media stuff for me. Um, Twitter, you probably see quite a few um, bookish things. Like I have my Goodreads updates go there and I'll occasionally like post random tweets about books and stuff that I'm reading and stuff like that. Um, not a ton, but like there are some book stuff that you'll see in my my tweets. Um, I'm also on Instagram. My Instagram username is kittennix. Um, K-I-T-T-E-N-N-Y-X and um, I, I post book stuff on there occasionally um, like sometimes just like pictures of my TBR um, I follow the local book fairies page the Louisiana book fairies and I have hidden a few books um, around town on occasion um, I, I still have some stickers so I may hide some more books probably throughout the rest of 2018 so um, you'll see those kind of things um, like I said, maybe random pictures of my books or of me reading. Um, other than that, it's just going to be like random life stuff. It's not really like a bookstagram account. I know some people have like strictly book related Instagram, but I'm not one of those people. Um, it just happens to have bookish things. Uh, if you want to follow me on um, Snapchat, uh, I will tell you right now, there's going to be like hardly no bookish things. Um, it's mostly just like random pictures and videos of my cats and um just me out on adventures throughout my life um so if you're interested in that feel free it's also kitten nicks is my username um for snapchat um like i said it's it's just kind of all kinds of random stuff um a lot of me and my cats being silly and then just like my daily life um on my story and stuff so feel but feel free to add me on there but you're probably not gonna see a lot of bookish things on there and that would be the main socially media places to find me well this was a lot of fun um hopefully i wasn't too awkward um but i'm really looking forward to putting out content um being a part of the booktube community um and all that good stuff like i said i'll have links to my social media in the com in the description box i'll also have a link to the original new to booktube tag video um from the between chapters channel um i'll link directly to that um and yeah i'm really excited thanks for watching and i'll see you next time